thanks for coming um, so early. It's the first talk, uh, first talk uh, today. Um, I'm glad you're all here. And um, what I'm going to talk about is uh, recheck and how we internally, why we internally call it the sorcerer's stone, because um, it can turn selenium into adamantium. So it can help you make your tests unbreakable. And I want to um, give a short introductory demo of that, just so you know what you have to expect. Oh, and I changed, of course, I changed something here. Okay, so this is a typical selenium test. Can you all see it? Um, so you have, uh, you have a setup method. Uh, here I used a local um, HTML file because I didn't want to depend on Wi-Fi. Um, but then you uh, find an element, uh, in that case by its ID, and you send it some keys, and at some point you press submit, and then you check, um, you check a result. So that's a fairly typical, very small Selenium test. And if executed, um, you will see that a browser window pops up. So here's the Chrome browser, and as you can Okay, it was very fast. As you can see, um, it, it entered something into the form, press submit, and the test is green. However, the problem is if I now change that page. So this is the form page that was called. Here is the ID um, that was being called uh, email. If I change that to something else, or if I completely delete it, um, then when I execute the test, it will fail because what it does is it identifies um, the element it wants to interact with with the ID. The ID changed or isn't there anymore, so apparent, uh, obviously the test has to fail. However, if you use recheck, just wrapping your driver, um, so as you see, it's the same test overall. Uh, if you execute that test, um, it will now not fail. And this is the magic. Yes, uh, it makes sense. Um, and I will show you why. So what, as you can see, uh, it still can interact with the web page. It still can find the element. It identifies them correctly, executes, and is green. And this is what I will be talking about, how we achieved that, and how you can do it too. <laughs> so I got you all interested. <laughs> Very good. No, 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 I will come to that. Okay. So, this is what I will be talking about. How to make your tests unbreakable. And this was a teaser day a more. Um, first of all, I want um, you all to um, think about um, how automated tests are not actually tests. Because an automated test doesn't tell you uh, about inconsistencies, it doesn't tell you about bugs that are already in the software. An automated test only makes sure if you change something here, then this doesn't break. This is what automated testing gives you. And in that regard, it's not a test. In that regard, um, it's more like a version control. So you use um, an automated test to make sure that you get notified about changes. If there is a change um, where you have an assert, um, you could still say, oh, that was actually a correct change, an intended change, I'll update the assert, right? So the, the test automation doesn't help you find bugs in the software, it only guards against introducing new ones. That's why it's called regression test, right? And what you typically do when you use version control, for instance, if you use Git, Git tells you where the code has changed. So it tells you, here is your test automation, here is your configuration, that changed. But, unfortunately, uh, there's more to software than code. <laughs> because uh, software um, consists of the dynamic runtime um, information. This is what your users see, right? This is what you write, this is what you create, this is what your users see, and um, for that you need um, data, you need a runtime system, you need much more than just the code. And this is not version controlled by Git. This is. So there's a gap. There's a, a, a problem there. Because what you want to know about is where has the software changed? But as I just said, Git tells you where has the code changed. 
And this is what we use tests for. Tests close that gap. Tests turn um, the dynamic runtime of the software into a test, into a static artifact, into code that you can govern then by version control. This is what, how, we, how we currently close the gap. This is why you have to execute the test in order to do that. So, um, as I said, automated tests are really version control. And now we'll have a look at a typical test, like at a, at a unit test. So you have, um, this is a an an, an, an test that tests um, an XML transformation. So you have an XML that goes in, and uh, you have a remove element transformer that transforms that XML, and you want to make sure that the remove is gone and that the keep is kept. So in other words, um, this is what you put in. The above XML is put what you put in. Then the test executes, and this is what should get out, right? So this says, okay, the, the keep tag is still there, the remove tag is removed. A fairly typical test. However, the problem is, uh, the way the test is written, um, if you execute it, um, it will pass. And this is not even valid XML, but it fulfills all the assertions, because it just says uh, keep is still there and remove is not, so this test passes which is bad, right? This is not what we want. We want that only that XML should pass. We want um, that this complete thing be verified. And this is actually what is called golden master testing, um, uh, derived from the LPs, uh, where you had a, an audio recording that was a golden master and all else uh, was copied from that. And this is, and there are even uh, existing libraries for that. For instance, approval test is very, um, fairly well-known because it's um, available in almost any language, a programming language. So what this gives you is you now can change your test and say approvals, verify XML, and then you transform that uh, to string. And um, it makes sure that this test will pass only if the XML is, looks like that, and really only. So it, it checks for every white space character even. <clears throat> So as I said, automated tests are version control. Then, if an automated test is version control, an assert is a blacklist of a change. Okay, so you say this, for instance, the remove tag has to be there um, unless I uh, update the assert. So I specify uh, a single rule that is, is checked, and instead, um, golden master testing is whitelisting of changes. So you say, you check, so, Imagine you execute a test without any assertion, right? Then you, then you check nothing. If you, put, if you don't put any rules there. If you don't ignore anything, then with gold master testing, you check everything. And obviously, um, there are some things that you don't want to check, like with Git, you have um, also logs and classes and target folder and stuff like that. So there are always stuff that you want to ignore. And you can do that with, uh, with those rules. And there's um, an ideal amount of checks. So you want to put some asserts there. It doesn't make sense to have an, a, a test without any assertions. You, so you put some asserts or you ignore some stuff. So at some point you end up somewhere in the middle. But the thing is, um, imagine what happens if you forget to ignore something or imagine what happens if you forget to assert something. Right? That's a very a vast difference. And it even, it's even better because you can't check for things that you don't expect. So this is a problem that they had at Google. Um, at Google, apparently, um, they mark uh, changes for testers. So they have manual testers. If you're a manual tester at Google, you're supposed to test the things that have a dancing unicorn next to them more thoroughly than the rest because those things have been changed. However, uh, someone forgot to remove the marking, and the customers ended up having dancing unicorns on their screen because they didn't have a test that checked whether there are dancing unicorns on the screen. So um, if, you, if you don't know what to check for, if you don't expect a change, then you can't assert for it, right? So the, the question is, where do you err? In, in, um, you don't want to err. Um, on the, you want to err on the side of caution. In other words, blacklisting, for instance, a firewall is a bad idea. You want to, if you, if you create a firewall, you want to blacklist and say this port is, is free. And also, um, what we learned uh, when we did this, 
is that typically you want to uh, check rather more than less. So it makes sense to start from here because you have less work um, to ignore individual things. Okay, so what we created with ReCheck essentially is a Git for the GUI. Actually, it's more because you can use it even, uh, you can implement it for XML or log files or anything. So you could um, even say it's a Git for any interface, but we uh, concentrate it now, for now we concentrate it on web. So it's a Git for the GUI. And um, with Git ignore, um, as I just said, you ignore stuff. So you give it rules, you, wanna, you, you ignore log files, class files, and everything in target, for instance. And with the golden master, for instance, with retake uh, web, um, you want to ignore, um, for instance, class attributes. You say, OK, I don't care if I check a website, uh, I don't care about the class attribute. Or you can ignore um, with a regex. You can say, OK, um, I want to ignore every change. And actually, this is what I did. So I cheated on the, on the example, which, which was remarked in the audience already. So um, that test shouldn't have passed earlier, because what I did is I just ignored every change, which probably is not a good idea. So it just let me remove that. Um, now, if I re-execute the test, it will still execute. It, it just will not pass, because it will say there are changes but it will still correctly execute. It fills in the form correctly, but now it fails, saying there are changes. This is what you want. But obviously for a teaser it looks better if it, if it passes. <laughs> So you can um, ignore changes, uh, attribute changes um, based on regex. And um, on type, for instance, you can say, I want to ignore the, the link type, uh, the, the, the link tag. And so ignore every link tag. Or via XPath or ID, you can say, uh, I ignore everything that has the ID banner. There should be only one thing, but anyway. Um, or ignore everything on a specific uh, XPath. And of course, you can uh, combine it. So you can say, ignore every font for um, a, d a diff um, with an ID. Uh, with such an ID, whatever. So you can combine the stuff uh, for XPath or whatever. And um, we impl implemented something we call filter, um, because um, if you don't use any ignore at all, and you change the website, um, um, it, happens, it often happens that you get a lot of changes, um, and it's then hard to understand which, w w which changes caused what. So for that, we implemented filter, which uh, work by the same syntax. So you can have different filters and say, OK, for now, I want to ignore all CSS changes and only know what content changed, for instance. So, um, and that I want to, again, demo. So, ah, and by the way, um, to give you a better impression, we um, created a Chrome, Chromium um, plugin to, uh, to test this. The plugin it's, itself is also open source. Um, but it uses services from us, so these services are, uh, well. So here, is, here are two websites that are fairly similar, but not quite, as you can see. So I'll just use the plugin, get my, um, oh, right. create my golden master. Then I have another site, and I want to compare against that. So I want to compare. Now my, uh, my, my difference report was created. And now I can uh, open that report either with a, with a CLI or with a, uh, with a GUI. I will now open it with a GUI because it's much more um, visual. So as you can see, there are um, a couple of changes. And um, you see everything that changed. So you see. There's a change in outline, there's a change in class. Apparently, it was before button primary, now it's button secondary. Uh, some, some color changes and stuff like that. And even text. So yeah, you see, um, for instance, here, you see that the text uh, now has a semicolon at the end. So this is, it gives you all the changes. And as I said, you can ignore uh, what you don't care about. So if you, if you have it like that, then you immediately see 
that um, the text has changed. Not only the button, but also the text. And this is uh, fairly powerful, actually, because you can now, for instance, compare those two. And if you have a look at that, it looks very different, right, from one another. As you can see, there are a lot of changes. So let's just see what happens. Um, we create... Uh, we create a gold master, and then we compare. Gives us a new report. We open the report. And now, as I said, we now have a lot of changes, right? Because we changed very much. But we can just say, okay, ignore everything that is related to positioning. Like if, if something is five pixel uh, to the left, ignore that. We can say, ignore everything uh, that is related to style. For instance, um, blue versus green color, everything like that. And um, we can say, ignore everything that is invisible, like um, ID, um, CSS class, all of that. And so what you end up with is just, let, just that. And as you can see, um, these are the actual changes. So here, um, I changed the text from $115 to 120 and here I change the text from, one, from 50 to 45. So this is um, immediately drills down to what, what you care about. And you can use those filters um, as ignore rules. So you can say my test should pass, even with such, sub, such substantial changes, my test should pass only if the content changes. Uh, oh, sorry, should fail only if the content changes. And what is even more interesting, um, how would you, like, um, there are tools, what typically um, people use for that is pixel diffing, right? Um, you can't, as I just said, you can't use a pixel diff for the, for the change of the, for this change already, pixel diffing doesn't work. Um, but um, how do you handle um, moving elements? So you can't pixel diff that, right? So, I mean, it changed, so what? <laughs> um, but with recheck, it works because you just say, okay, create a div animation. Uh, I prepared that because uh, so everything is already existing. And now I say um, compare. And there's, again, there's the report. I open that uh, with the GUI. And now again, okay, it says um, the outline and the margin changed, but I can say, okay, ignore that. I don't care about outline and margin. And then I see, oh, the animation delay changed. Uh, now the animation started uh, 0.3 seconds later, and the text changed. Um, so there was um, that part of the text that was deleted. So. Okay, um, typically, um, so um, what you use typically for that visual regression testing um, is a pixel diff. And I would say the market leader there is Apply Tools, uh, which is, um, as far as I know, currently the lar largest company. And they use AI to give you, to filter non uh, relevant changes. So in that case, for instance, um, so I'd say the whole website shifts five pixels. Apply tools can filter that and say, oh, this is a, a whole a change of the whole website, and uh, in reality, nothing changed. So Apply tools uses AI for that, but in that case, it has a, a false negative because the uh, semicolon uh, was added, and uh, AI thought it was an artifact and didn't mark it. And on the other hand, this one didn't really change. It only changed because the button um, changed in size. And um, so you have a false positive and a false negative. And as you can see, it's, you know, it only gives you pixel diff. So you have to, you have to manually review that and, and, and have a look at that. And you can't write any rules for that. So you can't say ignore whatever. So you can't uh, handle that. What Retake Web, on the other hand, gives you is a semantic diff. So we um, capture every CSS element of, uh, as, as every CSS attribute of every CSS element on the rendered website and then compare that, store that, and compare that uh, later on. So instead, we give you, we can even say the class changed, okay? Something that you don't see 
if you don't have a look at the code itself, you don't see what changed. We say the class changed, and we say the, the, the border, the, the color changed, and stuff like that. So you can, as I just saw, show, showed you, you can uh, write rules for that. You can say, I want to ignore class changes, but uh, I'm interested in color changes, for instance. Yeah, these are, these are just um, backups in case the demo didn't, wouldn't have worked. <laughs> Um, so yeah, as I just said, you have rule-based deterministic ignore. Um, it's open source, freely available. And um, what, what I just showed you, the GUI, um, this is the part um, where, where um, and the service behind it is the part where we make money from. But the, the core technology, the, um, the Ritek um, framework and uh, the command line interface um, is, is full, uh, fully open source and fully free. You can use it offline because you don't have, like with Apply Tools, it's a service, so all of your systems have to send their data to them. They analyze it and send back the result. You can use that, all of that offline. Um, it gives you unbreakable selenium. To that, I will come in a minute. Um, and it works in principle for any technical interface. Like it even works, you can implement it uh, for XML, for JSON, for anything like that. Um, and uh, the, the difference rules and everything still work for that. So, some people like it. <laughs> um, but why you all came here? Um, what I was initially talking about is how we make the test actually unbreakable. How do we achieve that feat that Selenium uh, can still execute, the test can still identify those elements, even though the ID changed? How did we do that? Well, the idea in principle is simple. We create a golden master anyway. So this is our type of testing, right? We create a golden master, and now we can edit the golden master. We can insert a virtual ID, and then refer to that virtual ID. So you, you can, oh, actually that slide's too early. Um, and, and those changes are unaffected um, by the actual change. So uh, whatever is in there, whatever additional uh, information we add there, um, is, is not contained um, on the actual side, is not reflected on the actual side, is not affected by changes. Which means that... Um, oh, sorry, that was too fast. Your test goes um, and says, OK, I want a Selenium, give me that. Uh, we created a wrapper. Uh, Selenium says, I want to use... Um, I want to search in the gold master for that. Then we create a one-on-one -on -one assignment and return the best match. So we say, um, this is the element that is most closely what you're looking for, and then return that. And then we can even, ah, I didn't show that, um, we can even output a warning. So when I execute the test um, that just failed, um, I have warnings here. It says, OK, um, the golden master, the, the, tele, the, the, te, uh, the test, would have broken um, if it was a typical test. Um, now you have to um, update uh, your test or use our retest ID. You see that? It's a pro I don't know how to make that bigger, actually. No, it doesn't work. OK, big. back to the slide. So we say, um, we, we guarded your test from breaking. Now, if you apply those changes to the gold master, so we say, OK, look, in the old Ah, oh, okay, sorry. Here. Well, that also is too small. Too bad. Okay, here we, we say what, have cha what has changed. And for instance, we say um, that the ID has changed. Anyway, it's also too small. Sorry about that. I don't know how to make it bigger in Eclipse. <laughs> um, so we say... Um, because based on the golden master, we identified that element, and we saved your test from breaking. Now, if you update the golden master and remove the ID, the ID um, also in the golden master, then we have no way of identifying the element anymore, and then it will break. So it, it breaks only if you update the golden master accordingly to that change. And um, how does the identification work? Um, well, we have redundancy. First of all, we have redundancy. If you say, um, give me the element by the ID, and the ID changes, um, then you don't know which element to refer to, right? 
Um, but in the gold master, we have redundancy anyway. We know um, the path of the element, we know the name of the element, the label of the element, whatever. So we have multiple, um, much more information about the element than the, than the typical test has. And additional to that, we have the complete picture. We only, we not only do we have all the identifying uh, attributes of that individual element, but we have we have we know all other elements, so we can make a one-on-one -on -one assignment. We can say this is the button what we're looking for. That that button is not there anymore, but this button is that. We, we're sure about that. There is no any other button. Uh, we we can make a one-on-one -on -one assignments of all of those elements. So this button has to be that. Even if the ID if the ID changed, if the label changed, if the X path changed, um, it still has to be that button because it's the, the highest match. All other elements are too different. So we find that element. I did that already. And, and we return it uh, to Selenium, which then uh, executes nicely. And on top of that, what's that what, uh, what that gives you on top of that um, is that you now can use um, the additional attributes that we put into the Golden Master um, for identification. For instance, instead of using the ID, you can now use a retest ID. So, for instance, at some points, um, people use uh, CSS locators. Sometimes you just don't have the ID of, of an element, right? Um, you don't have a, a nice, simple X path, so you have to use something else. And in, what we can use instead is now the retest ID. So, in that, this is a gold master. Gold master is stored in XML, uh, by the way. Um, in there, you have an attribute that's called retest ID, and you can just say, I want to use that retest ID instead. So, I changed my test. I didn't do that before. I can do it now. Um, I can change my test and say, OK, that ID doesn't exist anymore. I, uh, I deleted it. I can use the retest ID. And now, if I update the test, it won't break. If I update the gold master behind the test, it won't break, because the ID is, n is unaffected by the changes. The ID is not on the, on the original page, so um, applying the changes won't change the, the retest ID, so I can now up safely update my test, and it won't break. And what it, um, uh, the technology also gives you is the possibility to now write data-independent tests. Because now, what you can do is, um, you can create a test that just clicks on the first element, whatever that element is, uh, of the list, for instance. Um, then you, you write the test, you load new data. For instance, every night you you'd load production data into your system. Some people do that. Um, then you create a golden master. Then you load the new version that you actually want to test, and then you create the diff. And then you see what changed between the two versions of the software that you want to change, uh, that, you, uh, that you want to test. And you can do it, you can create your test data independently. You just have to execute the test twice, right? You have to execute it once uh, to create the golden master, and then you have to execute it with a new version again to test against the golden master. The thing is, you can't change both at the same time. So you can't update the, the data and the, the software version at the same time. You have to do it um, uh, one after another. So um, I was a bit faster than I expected. I want, uh, next thing I want to show you is how you turn um, an existing test into an unbreakable test. So. This is the test I start with. This is uh, the typical Selenium test, right? And this one um, breaks if I execute it because I here um, changed the ID. So let's undo that. Now I execute the test. It should be green again. Okay. So, now in order to utilize recheck um, in that test, you just have to I have to peek. Sorry, uh, you just have to use um, the recheck driver 
instead of the, the um, remote driver, and that one is fully compatible. So you can use it even um, underneath um, other test frameworks. So if you use Cucumber, for instance, if you use whatever, uh, there are other test frameworks, this is fully compatible. So you can, you can mix uh, ReCheck with any other uh, test framework that utilizes Selenium. So you just uh, wrap your original driver that you would use inside of the ReCheck driver. And then there are two more things that you have to say. Um, start test and uh, quit. Uh, now I can remove the assertion, by the way, because um, if I do that, um, it will create a gold master after every step. So I can remove the assertion. And I just say driver point cap test. Um, so I tell it that the test has ended. These are the two things that I need to do. And I already have transformed my test into a reject test. That's now unbreakable. So I remove it. The first time it will execute, it will fail because it has to create the golden master. So as I said, it, it failed because, um, and here it says, no golden master found. First time test was, ru uh, was run. Don't forget to commit. So now the golden master files are created. Now I re-execute the test. Okay. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, so if the test isn't green the first time you execute it, um, you can just um, use um, um, that file and um, this is the, the recheck file that I showed earlier. I don't know why there are differences. Maybe because of the beamer. Um, so I just ignore the differences. I say, okay, um, I'm not uh, interested in positioning in that case. It's the outline, so where elements are on the website. I don't care about that because I only uh, want to know uh, whether um, content is, is correct, for instance. So now the test is green. As you just saw, if, as I mentioned, if it isn't green the first time, you just use the ignore file like, like you would with Git. Right? If you set up Git, it says that your class files are not, are not uh, committed. Do you want to commit them? So you have to adapt the, the Git ignore file and say ignore class, fi uh, class files. You have to do the same thing here. As you just saw, it's fairly easy. Um, you just say, can I make that bigger? You just say, OK, um, these are the attributes I'm not interested in. Please ignore them globally, and then the test is green. And now, if I change uh, the email, uh, sorry, on the actual page to something else, or I remove the H, then this test will also pass. And as I just said, what will happen is um, it doesn't find the original uh, element, so it goes into the gold master, finds the element with the ID email in the gold master creates a one-on-one -on -one assignment of old to, old to new elements and returns the new element from the website. So the test now is unbreakable in, in, reg in that regard or in regard to that change. I mean, if it's, you can still break your test, obviously, if you change too much, like if, you, uh, if the button isn't there anymore, <laughs> uh, like if it really isn't there anymore, uh, then the test fails. Um, but it still executes, and now it shows you all the differences. So here it says, for instance, that the ID um, it's pretty small, but I think you can maybe see it, that the ID has changed from email to something else. Um, if you want to ignore that change, you can say um, ignore uh, in, in, in the ignore file. And here is the console that says, okay, here's a warning. The ID um, used to identify um, 
change from age, uh, yeah, okay, that's the second one, change from age to null, because I deleted the ID, so the idea is not, uh, ID is not here anymore, and here it's, it says um, the ID changed from email to something else. And now um, it even tells you the retest ID. So it, it says, okay, either you, you, you have to use a new ID in your test, so you have to, to when you update the golden master, uh, for example, using the CLI or the, the GUI, if you update the gold master and say um, delete the ID in the gold master, then your test will break. So it says either you have to um, update your test uh, with that new ID, or you have to uh, you can use the retest ID that won't change ever. So this one is virtually um, completely independent from the actual page. It won't change no matter what you do to the page. So you can, you can use that um, instead. And in, in the case where we deleted the ID, uh, obviously <laughs> uh, it doesn't uh, give you an, an uh, alternative ID, it just says use the retest ID. Okay. Uh, this one is open source, as I said, and also the Chrome extension that I showed you is open source. Where we make money from is the services um, that are behind the open source, uh, the, the Chrome extension, and the GUI. Um, because uh, there are two, there's a command line interface that is free, and the GUI um, we make money with. with. So, um, this essentially was the talk. Um, are there any questions? Yes? Can you? Uh, you removed the explicit assertions in your test. Mm. So how would you really delete a button if you want to delete a button? You have no way to, sell, to tell that, yes, I really want to delete it. Or you have to update the Golden Master manually. Ah, OK, I didn't show that part. So you can use the CLI. We, um, I didn't prepare that. I don't know if it works out of the box. Um, so uh, we have a command line interface, uh, like with Git, where you can say apply change and then um, it applies the changes and updates the Golden Master. Um, or we have a GUI where you can, where you can uh, simply say, I want to update that chain, uh, that, the Golden Master accordingly and update that. So you, uh, it's just, a, uh, just essentially two clicks. So you, you click, you, you have a checkbox where you say this change update, and then you ha have a button where you say apply, and then your Golden Master file is updated. That was the question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and just another question. <coughs> the Golden Master, uh, you committed it in, in your normal Git repository, just. So the Golden Master is essentially an XML file okay. uh, that you can just commit normally in your, uh, like you would with any, with any other um, um, file in your Git repository, right? Any other questions? Um, the GUI, um, is that like software as a service or is it uh, something you buy and can run? Uh, so that's something you buy and can run locally. Okay. Right. Does it work with uh, React or Angular? Um, it should. Uh, I haven't specifically tested it uh, with uh, React or Angular. Ah, right now it's uh, implemented in it's implemented in Java, and right now we focused the tests um, also to be implemented in, in Java. Um, but um, um, a version that works with, like where you write the tests in JavaScript or PHP or something, uh, should come in the next months. So we're looking to four to eight weeks, I guess. Because we, we, um, we um, shrinked it down essentially to a, to a JavaScript file that's executed in the browser. Um, like you saw with the Chromium, uh, with, uh, with the extension. So it doesn't really matter what the underlying programming language is. Uh, but for now, we implemented it only in Java, and other languages will follow. Okay, thanks. thanks. Any, any other questions? Um, yeah. Will it be um, uh, work if uh, the ID uh, dynamically changed everything, uh, every time uh, the, web's, uh, so the website is loaded? Uh, that means uh, uh, if you um, first time you load the site, um, the IDs were created, and next uh, time, uh, then you will create a golden master, and from that uh, point, you can 
um, change the IDs every, mm -hmm. every time the website loads? Yes, it no. works. So um, what, you would, what you would have to, to make sure is that you know the ID that went into the Golden Master. If you use uh, um, get element by ID, you obviously have to use the correct ID mm -hmm. at that point um, to, 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 to execute the test once. Right? You, you have a problem essentially to execute the test. Uh, if, like, how would you um, reference the elements the first time you execute the test? You can you can create the golden masters even with the Chrome uh, extension, mm -hmm. and and then use the retest ID of the golden master, um, and then reference that in the test. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it should work because you can ignore ID. It's just an attribute as any any other attributes, you can ignore it, yeah. and um, you just have to, to reference uh, the, the retest ID or uh, XPath or something that works for you. Okay, great. Any other questions? Yeah, can you pass? Are there any experiences how this is working with um, larger dinosaur um, web applications from the wild? SAP, for example, which is not very nice to test. Um, we have, um, with web pages, we don't have a customer that's using it on very large websites. Uh, we have the same thing implemented in Java Swing. And uh, for instance, there we have someone, um, so just recently I've, I've seen a report where there were checked 800,000 elements, um, and there were 200 differences. And it takes like two minutes to drill down because you can just um, ignore. So you can say um, ignore hide all accepted or ignore differences. So everything that's green uh, goes away. You only focus on the differences. So out of that 800,000 elements, you get the 200. And then within two minutes, you know what the problem is. So I, I assume it should work the same way with web. But unfortunately, um, we don't have big uh, customers that use it as extensively as uh, those with Swing yet. Any other questions? Okay, if there are no other questions, then uh, thanks for coming. Um, I'm, uh, if, you, if any other questions come up uh, afterwards, then please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, so. Um, so you can find us on the web retest. Uh, you can contact me directly or contact the company. Um, please, uh, we uh, try it out. Like um, the, the Chrome extension isn't uh, available in the web store uh, yet. Um, it will be on Tuesday because it's all very fresh. <laughs> um, but um, the Retech Web uh, project um, is, is working and is being used. Um, so please check it out. Uh, tell your friends um, and give us feedback. If anything doesn't work for you, if you have problems, uh, please tell us because we as I said, this is fairly new. Uh, Retech Web is now in version 1.3, uh, Chrome extension in 0 0.8. <laughs> so uh, it's not, not publicly available in the Web Store yet. Um, so this is all very fresh, and your feedback helps us um, uh, improve it further. And yeah, tell, tell people you know so this gets more attention. Thank you very much. <laughs>